What's the difference between plywood and regular wood? Or what we should really call dimensional lumber? For that matter, which of these should you choose for your projects? I've already made several videos on material comparisons, and in some cases, I've been explicit about which material I prefer. A lot of people have asked me to do the same in this situation. They want to know which material is stronger or which one is superior to the other one. But the problem is, those questions are not easy to answer for these two materials. You get into a world of detail when you start breaking down plywood and dimensional lumber. And the truth is, there are so many types of both that a head-to-head -head comparison is pretty much impossible. So I'll do subsequent videos exploring each of these lumber types in much greater focus. But what I want to give you in this video is a primer or a basic overview of how newcomers can understand these two products. I'm going to talk about where they're most frequently used, what their independent strengths are, and even why they exist. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. All right, let's start with regular wood. And as I mentioned, what we should really call this stuff is dimensional lumber. This is literally wood cut and seasoned straight from a tree. To create dimensional lumber, timbered logs are passed through a milling process to reduce them to usable sizes and shapes, usually long, flat boards with square edges. And we tend to mill things to fairly standard lengths, widths, and thicknesses, hence the term dimensional. For many, many years throughout human history, all lumber in the world was either dimensional lumber or rough cut logs. We simply didn't have the means or reason to produce anything else. Until in the early 1800s, someone figured out this stuff, plywood. Plywood is an engineered wood product made of many thin layers of wood laid in alternating patterns and glued together under pressure to produce wide flat sheets. It requires an industrial process to make plywood, and that's why it really didn't catch on until the mid 1900s. But why did people even go through the trouble? What was the point of producing these bulky panels? It's because for as long as we've been building stuff with wood, we've had this very serious problem, limited board width. Dimensional lumber can only be so wide because trees on the whole only grow so wide. And even when you can mill really wide slabs from big trees, they're always dimensionally unstable, crazy heavy, and hard to season and finish. I discussed this in my wood slabs video with Urban Timber. So if you wanted a board wider than say 12 inches, you had to edge join multiple boards together to form a panel. This process is very difficult, even with modern joiners and clamps, and requires a lot of practice to get good at it. But along the way, some genius had this idea. Let's peel trees like apples, slicing them from the outer edge inward to produce long, thin sheets of wood. We can stack and glue a bunch of them together and make wood in whatever dimension we like. So now, thanks to them, you can just go to the store and buy a board that's four feet wide and eight feet long. This has made it immeasurably easier to produce things like cabinets, wide furniture, and even house sheathing, stuff with broad span surfaces. That's the single greatest benefit of plywood. It gives us wood in wide dimensions. You can buy a full sheet and break it down however you like. But plywood has many other benefits too. For instance, it's actually very strong and stable. As mentioned, the various layers are glued in alternating directions, 90 degrees to one another. So any tendency or weakness in one layer is counteracted by the layer above or below. Furthermore, because of these alternating layers, plywood is not prone to splitting. Whereas the long linear grain of dimensional lumber can create natural fault lines in the wood that will cause splitting in certain boards. And many plywoods are also very attractive. The outer layers of cabinet grade plywood are selected for uniformity and a lack of knots. So you get these large, pretty boards with a pattern which is something very hard to produce by means of edge joining dimensional lumber. And these full sheets are also much lighter than edge joint slabs, so you can work with them and move them around with ease. Now, all that said, plywood does have drawbacks compared to dimensional lumber. The first is that with plywood, you always wind up with this unsightly edge. The sandwich layering looks unnatural, and if you don't want people to see it, you have to hide it with edge banding or finished lumber, as I mentioned in my face frames video. And while plywood is strong and stable, I still think it's not quite as stable as dimensional lumber when used in certain ways. A 1x8 board of even soft pine is going to have more span strength than a piece of plywood in the same length. That's the wood's ability to avoid deflection across a span. And plywood only comes in thinner dimensions. Almost all plywood is 3 quarters of an inch thick or less. So you won't find it in framing lumber thicknesses. This is why we don't traditionally frame with it. If you're looking for real strength in most structures, you're going to want dimensional lumber. Unless you're going to size up to more extreme versions of engineered lumber. LVLs, or laminated veneer lumber for instance, are a plywood product designed to act as structural beams 
and they're often superior in strength to dimensional beams. And in some high-scale architectural projects, even more elaborate laminated wood products are used to create strength at an industrial scale. But those aren't things that DIYers are going to mess with too much. For the most part, with home projects, plywood is best used for cabinets and shelving, any place that you need wider boards without the fuss. And dimensional lumber may be fickle in terms of stability. It warps more aggressively and has flaws like knots and split grain. But it also has a more attractive natural edge, is very strong along the grain, and can be found in greater thicknesses. So you can get everything from framing lumber to woodworking grade hardwoods. That's a quick rundown of the basic differences between plywood and dimensional lumber. There's still much, much more to be said about these things, including the importance of plywood layer count and softwoods versus hardwoods, but we'll have to get to those later. For now, what did you think of this explanation? Was it helpful? Do you have a preference in your build between the two? Let me hear about it down in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon, and please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.